Okay, guys, so this is a continuation of the video I made concerning cost cancellation, cost withdrawal, and cost drop. So I did not actually end that. I didn't want the video to be too long. I wanted you to really watch that and understand cost cancellation, and then you come up to understand what cost drop and cost withdrawal is all about. All right, so hello, guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Ako Ife. I want to welcome all my returning subscribers. I want to say thank you so much for always coming back to watch my videos. And please, if you're watching me for the very first time, do not forget to hit on the subscribe button down below. Hit on the like button. And also, you're going to be sharing my videos to as many people as possible. Thank you so, so much, guys. So, let's get straight up. So, in the previous video, I was talking about cost cancellation. And I explained what cost cancellation is. You cancel a cost a day from the day you register it to up to two, two days to the uh, start of the new term. Alright, so you have two days before the start of the new term to cancel the courses and when you do that you know that your cumulative gpa will not be affected and this course will not appear on your transcript all right the transcript of that term is not going to appear there okay and also i talk about leave of absence a period where you are being inactive in school and what do you need to do you need to apply for this leave of absence you don't need to just get up and say oh i'm not attending school this time and then that's all about it no you need to apply for it all right so uh, we talked about that and we also said if you want to cancel all of your courses when you cancel those courses, you will need to still apply. Even after canceling all your courses, you will still need to apply for a leave of absence to tell the school that you will not be active in school during that term. If you don't do that, you are going to face the school with consequences. All right? Okay, so that's this is it for course cancellation. So let's get into what course drop is. What is course drop? What do you understand by course drop? Okay, let's read what the school wrote because I said we are going to be reading the write-ups of the University of the People and then I'm going to be explaining everything to you so you can better understand. Okay, a student may drop a course during the first week of the course session without academic penalty. A course drop during this time does not appear on your transcript, does not affect your grade point average, and is in, not included in your attempted credits okay it's not included let me read it again a student may drop a course during the first week of the course session without academic penalty a course drop during this time does not appear on your transcript does not affect your grade points average and is not included in your attempted credit what does this mean what does this mean first week remember on the line that word they say first week of the course session without academic penalty okay what are they saying? When the sc when school begins, all right. When school begins, during that time, the first week, all right. Remember, at University of the People, we have nine weeks. First, we have week one, week two, week three, week four, week five, week six, week seven, week eight, and up to week nine. And week nine is always the examination period. So we actually have week one to week eight to study, and then week nine is taking up the exams. What are they trying to say about course drop? Course drop happens when you drop a course, you, you say, I'm not taking up this course. And you're not actually just saying, oh, I'm not taking up this course. You're doing it by action because there are options there. You have to click on it. You have to click on course drop. And of course, they are going to ask you the reason why you're dropping the course. Is it because of family issues? Is it because of financial issues? Is it because of, oh, maybe you can't, you won't be able to handle all of the courses and so forth and so on. All right. So what happens you have first week when school begins when school resumes you have first week all right first week within that first week you can actually drop your course okay that first week you can actually drop your course all right so when you drop your course during the first week which is called course drop first week when school resumes remember that course cancellation is two days it happens from the day you register up to two days before the start of the new term course drop that's course cancellation right two days before the start of the new term now course drop happens the first week that's when school begins that first week that school begins you can actually drop that course and when you drop this course this course when you drop this they say the course drop during the this time does not appear on your transcript it's not going to appear on your transcript that oh this person took e-commerce and did not pass it or blah 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 it's not going to show there and then it's not also going to affect 
your grade points. It's not going to affect your cumulative GPA. So you're just free. So course drop and course cancellation are almost the same. They have the same consequences. And a positive one. A positive one. All right. With course cancellation, it's not going to affect it's not going to be shown on your transcript. It's not going to affect your grade points. With course drop, it's not going to be shown on your transcript and it's not going to affect your grade points. But the difference is just that with course drop, you cancel two days before the start of the new term. But with course, that's course cancellation, sorry. With course cancellation, you actually cancel the course before the start, two days before the start of the new term. But with course drop, you cancel it within the first week of the new term within the first week of the new term. That is what we call cost drop. So when you do this, cost cancellation, cost drop is not going to affect. So they are actually giving you an opportunity that if you missed canceling the courses, you have another opportunity to drop the course, which is not going to affect your uh, your, 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 your grade points and it's not going to appear on your transcript. And now we have, that is cost drop for you. Now we have what we call cost withdrawal. What is course withdrawal at the University of the People? Now, let's look at it. Students may also formally withdraw from the course roster after the course drop period has passed, but must do so within the first four weeks of the term. A course withdrawal differs from a course drop in that the course is listed on the student's official transcript withdrawal from a course. Okay, withdrawal from a course does not assume withdrawal from the university what are they trying to say they are trying to differentiate what cost withdrawal and cost drop is now they say the cost has okay the the cost the cost roster after the cost drop period has passed what is cost drop period the cost drop period is the first week when school has resumed first week that cost drop happens all right but cost withdrawal happens now after so when the course drop period has passed as that first week has passed we now get into the second week up to the fourth week so you have second week third week and fourth week within that time is what we call course withdrawal you do not want to take up a course anymore you can actually withdraw the course now remember what are they trying to say you saying okay i'm withdrawing from this course doesn't mean you are withdrawing from the university and remember whether you're doing course drop or course cancellation or course withdrawal or if you are doing this and you are doing it on all of your courses if you are withdrawing from all of your courses or you're canceling all of your courses or you're dropping all of your courses which means you're doing all of this on all of your courses means you'll not be active in them in school you must go ahead to apply for a leave of absence so whether you're doing translation or drop or withdraw on all the courses, at the end of the day, you have to go in and apply for what we call a leave of absence, which I explained in the previous video or before the start of this video. Okay, so course withdrawal happens after the course drop period has passed. What is the course drop period? The course drop period is the first week of the term, first week when the school resumes. So when that period has passed, we have they say from the second week to the fourth week, within that period of time, you not taking up a course, you, what you are about to do is withdraw from that course. Okay, so when you do that, between the second week to the fourth week of the term, you call it course withdrawal at the University of the People. Withdrawing from a course, like I said, doesn't mean withdrawing from the university. You are still there at the university, but now you do not want to take up that course. Okay. So now the difference, what is the difference? What happens is that with a course withdrawal, course withdrawal is different from course drop in that the course is listed on the student's official transcript. So when you withdraw from a course, so you see that somehow you taking, you doing course withdrawal is somehow disadvantageous because at the end of the day, your official transcript is going to have that course on it. They are going to see that course on it, that you took up this course, you attempted. So it's going to show up on your course transcript, your official transcript that you attempted to take e-commerce, e-commerce, all right, but you actually did not take it. So you attempted to, it's going to show up, all right, though it's not going to affect your cumulative GPA, all right, it's not going to affect your cumulative GPA, but it's going to appear on your official transcript. But remember that with course drop and course cancellation, then no one will know that you ever took a signing for these courses. No one will know, only you at the university. Your transcript is not going to be showing it. 
So nobody knows. But if you're withdrawing from a course, it's going to show there. All right, it's going to appear on your official transcript that you attempted to get to get into this course. So that's the difference. All right, so I will advise you to always struggle to go for course drop or course cancellation. Remember, if you are going in for course withdrawal, it happens between second week to the fourth week of the term. Course cancellation, it happens two days before the start of the new term. Course drop, it happens the first week of the new term. So if you're if you're registered for a course and you're like, oh, I do not want to take this course anymore because of this issue, because of that issue, and you're wondering what to do, you can actually go in for these three options. Go in for course drop, go in for course cancellation, or go in for course withdrawal. I hope I've explained very well so you can better understand and telling you the advantages, all right, the advantages and disadvantages of each of these options. All right, so that is it. Please make sure you subscribe to my channel. If you have any question you want to ask, please do study at the comment section concerning the University of the People. Do study at the com comment section. I'm going to be answering it. Thank you so much. And please don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share this video to as many people as possible. See you in the next video. Thank you.